Take your CJ7 all the way to 11. Jeepers with Cool Guy. Welcome to another episode of Jeepers with Cool Guy. This is going to be a really fun one because I've spent the last week and a half trying to figure this out. And it's all in regards to the parking lights, side marker lights, turn signal switch, and the brake lights, and the hazard switch. I've gone through the wiring diagram of this respective Jeep probably a hundred times trying to figure it all out. So in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you the process that I went through, what needs to be grounded, how you ground it, the fuses to check for, and uh, the scenarios that I was running into that help, might help give you an idea of whatever scenario you're going through, this might be a solve for that. All right, first in the chain, we're going to start with the parking lights. You pay attention to a video I just recently put out there for the engine wire harness. It talks a little bit about this, but this will be a little bit more detail specifically about the actual parking lights. So in your wiring harness of your front headlights, your front lighting system, there is a ground wire that runs off of the headlight bracket, and that grounds to the grill. So that grounds the, the headlights, the parking lights, and these are, these are original parking lights. You can get aftermarket ones. It's, there really is not a whole lot of difference between them other than the aftermarkets have like crown lenses. Um, these actually have the Grote or Groot, G-R-O-T-E, and color of the wires might be a little bit different. Point is, is that the screws that go into, that hold this light housing onto the grill actually serve as your grounding point for this lighthouse. The OEM screws look just like this. Actually, this is an OEM screw. They have your coarse thread and then they have this facing shaft on them. And the purpose of that is to hold the plastic lens at a distance from the, the metal housing underneath and not to crush down on the, the foam gasket that's on the inside of this light. This screw serves as your grounding point between the, the metal housing of the parking light and the grill itself. So when you actually install this, you want to make sure that you have continuity between this screw, the metal housing of the lamp, and the grill. Without that, this will, this will always be an open circuit and you won't have function. So a good way of testing that is one to get a voltmeter and test connect it to this and the grill. So I'm going to take my voltmeter and I'm going to set it on continuity. And then you just take, it doesn't really make a difference what lead you use, but I'm going to connect this to I don't know, a metal part on the grill somewhere. Actually, anywhere. So if I connect here, and then I connect it to, I'm gonna use the bolt on the bumper. That means that this screw is grounded all the way through the grill into the frame, and it's got continuity with a bolt somewhere else on the, the body. So that way, I know I actually have a good ground. And you wanna test that for both lights. Because if you have a good ground here, but you have no ground on the other one, only one will work. Okay, so to show you what you should get, I'll turn the key on to accessories. Now, if I uh, turn on the, the parking lights, there you go. Works great. Then I can turn on the signal. Now, I'm going to put in the hazards. So that's how you make sure that your front set is operating correctly. Now, if you have installed these things and you're getting weird scenarios, I can almost guarantee that you have a bad connection. You have a, either a bad connection or you have a bad ground. More than likely, you have a bad ground. So make sure that you test that out. The other thing I'm going to recommend you do is always replace your light bulbs on those I think those were 11, the Sylvania's 1157As. So the A stands for amber. This segues into the rear brake lights because 
Those are 1157s, just straight 1157s. And your reverse lights, your backup lights, are 1156s. So let's move on to the rear brake lights. I was running into a really weird scenario, I thought it was weird, where I would press in the brake pedal and the brake lights wouldn't come on, but the clock would stop. And then I would push in on the hazard button and the clock would stop, but these lights would turn on. They wouldn't flash, they would just turn on. I did three things. I don't know which one of those was actually the solve, but you'll want to go through all three of these things to test that out. First was I took the, the lens off and I tested the continuity of the brake housing with the body. What, the way you test that is there's a metal plate, a backer plate on the inside of this housing that has three bolts and those three bolts go through that metal plate and into the body of the CJ758. That bolt, very much like the front parking screws, is what grounds this light housing to the rest of the system. So you want to make sure that you have continuity between that bolt, that backer plate, and the body. If you, if you have continuity between the bolt and the body, but not the plate, then that means you've got a bad connection on the inside of this. And sometimes water gets into these things and it creates a rust barrier between the two and then you lose your ground. It just seems to be very indicative of everything electrical within the, the CJ7 fives and eights is that <laughs> most of your grounds disappear due to rust. But with that said, the second thing I did is I replaced all of the bulbs. So I replaced the parking light bulbs, I replaced the brake light bulbs, and I replaced the reverse light bulbs. And I used a lot of dielectric grease in all of the plugs just to make sure that I had a good waterproof connection for the foreseeable future and that I also had a, a good connection between the metals. The third thing I did is I replaced the fuses. So let's uh, go on to the next step and check out the fuse box. So this is the fuse box for, I think it's 70, 78, almost through, if not all the way through to 86. The 76 and the 77s, if I recall correctly, had a different fuse box, and they actually had glass fuses in them. I've got the clock and the tack. The tack is the double orange wire, and the white wire is for the clock. I want to point out is the two fuses up there at the top. One is for the hazard lights, and the other one is for the turn signal. Turn signal is on the right. Flasher for the hazard lights is on the left. So let's talk about that real quick. These are the original hazard light flasher. This is a 552 12 volt Wagner. This is a Wagner 224. This is for the turn signal. I had went out and bought two brand new flasher fuses. They were both 552s and I couldn't get anything to work. I had all these weird things going on where I was having like the the rear running lights weren't turning on. Both brake lights would flash when I had the uh, the turn signal on. The parking lights weren't working. It was all kind of bizarre. So I replaced those with the original. So I put this in for the turn signal and this one in for the flasher and everything all of a sudden worked. It was great. I was super excited about it. And then I came back the next morning and it was right back to where it was. Nothing worked. I hadn't changed anything. It was like, what in the hell is going on? So then I went back and I started again. So I left these in the, the fuse box thinking that these were, they were fine. And I tested them out. Continuity was great and the ohm resistance and all that stuff was right where it was supposed to be. So in the process of the last week, I started testing the grounds and getting all that stuff fixed. And I found that I had a bad ground in my parking lights and then things were slowly starting to move forward. And then I got all the way down to where everything was working except for the turn signals. And I didn't know, I was like, I, I'm at a complete loss. So then I went back and pulled both of these and put the, the new 552 fuses for both of them. And now all of a sudden everything works. The flashers work quicker. The, uh, the turn signal works great. Um, I've got power to everything, 
and the clock doesn't turn off when I push in the brakes. So I can't tell you what it was specifically to what problem was solved when I did one thing. My guess is, is that it was a combination of a few things. It was a couple, it was bad grounds, inadequate uh, fuses, and replacing maybe worn light bulbs that weren't getting good connections. So this may not be exactly what is happening to you, but um, my guess is, is that any one of those scenarios you're probably experiencing. So I'm not saying that the, the fuses were the problem. I'm not saying that the the ground was the problem. I'm not saying the light bulbs were the problem. I'm saying it could have been all three. The reason that I spent so much time trying to figure this out is because I was only testing one thing at a time. And the problem with the, the CJ7s is the electrical system, although it's fairly simple, it's really based in the grounds and you're dealing with 40 year old, you know, 35 year old pieces, which may or may, may not be as good as they were back then. Now these things, they do kind of wear out a little bit. So the point is, is that don't despair, just keep testing, get yourself a good voltmeter and go through the process. Uh, again, I will put in the description of this video uh, my email address. And if you want a wiring schematic for, I'm gonna, it's pretty much everything from like 76 up to 81, because I think 82 is when they had the, the emissions and they put the, the computer in the vehicle. And the, the wiring diagram changed because there's a whole bunch more wires and so on. But for the most part, it's essentially the same. You get the basis of it. But anyways, let me know if you're a subscriber or not, and I'll send you that wiring diagram. It really does help because it shows you what's supposed to be grounded, and that can help you sleuth through a lot of this stuff. So now I've got it all hooked up, super geeked, ready to go. The only thing I have to do is get my gauges and my dash hooked up and test it out. Like and subscribe because it makes me feel really good about myself when I see people actually paying attention to this stuff and I'm providing good information out there. And it's also how I'm paying for all this. Last but not least, this subject is probably one of the bigger banes of the CJ owners, electrical. If you have questions, I can't say that I can answer all this stuff because I'm trying to figure this out as I go and I'm a novice at best, but I'm starting to learn the system. It's starting to make more sense to me. So if you have questions, put it in the comments. I want to know whether this stuff is effective for you guys and what you're getting out of this um, because I'm trying to make this community as strong as it possibly can because I love these things. I mean, they are a pain in the ass. They were horribly, horribly built, but man, they are freaking cool.